So, Joe, it's great to catch up with you. It's been a couple of weeks since we last spoke. Um, how you must be getting closer to having some runners now, is that right? Yeah, well, luckily the um, BHA have produced a jumps programme. Um, the flat racing started a few weeks ago and it's going really well. Um, yeah, and everything seems to be running very smoothly behind closed doors. And I think they've done a fantastic job. And Royal Ascot this week's been amazing. It's very, very strange without any crowds there. Um, so so does, does that change the atmosphere? I mean, it's, I know what it's like if you go to a football match and there's no crowd. It, it's just... I, do you know what? I don't know because I haven't been yet. So I would imagine, yes, it would. But then on the other hand, you've still got the horses racing. You've still got the jockeys. Yeah. And still, the owners can't go and watch, which is a shame. Um, but then... You know, on the other hand, their horses are out running, and yeah. you know we're very lucky to have racing. So, and I guess it doesn't affect the performance of the jockey or the horses. They're still competing against each other, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. I think in some respects there'd be a lot of horses that would actually be a lot happier and probably settle a lot better because they haven't got the crowds and the noise. Yeah. And you know, so actually it might it might pay off for some um, not having yeah, the crowds yeah. there. Yeah. Um, because just, I mean, horses are, are, are herd animals, aren't they? Yeah, um, yeah, they are. Do, do, do some have personality? They just need to be at the front of the herd. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, they all, they all have different personalities and every single one is different and everyone needs something different. And I don't think people give that enough credit. Um, some love to be in front, some sulk if they're not in front and won't, yeah. you know, won't run. Some don't like to have the daylight and like to be dropped in and, and not, you know, just follow and just be part of the herd. And then you have to catch them at the last minute to get their head in front. So, yeah, they all have different quirks and different personalities. And how and how do you learn about an animal? You just observe them, how they react? Yeah, just by being around them, you know, watching them, riding. Well, for me, I am better riding them. Yeah. Um, but listening to what other people tell you when they get off them and, just seeing how they work in their work, whether they're really keen or whether yeah. they they want to be in front or you know they say it's just yeah they're in on the ground you know just being around them you see yeah yeah because mm. anybody who's learned to ride at a riding school you know they're invariably ponies that you have to keep separated from each other <laughs> yeah there are there are yes indeed yeah and we do have um you know I mean mine are still living out at the moment and they're coming in in the morning and being fed and ridden and then fed again and groomed and then they go back out and they've got their little gangs in different fields and it's amazing watching the pecking order in the field horses you would imagine from the way they work and the way they are in the stable are completely different out within the herd you know they much yeah. the pecking order I've had um, horses that have won you know quite a few races for me but yet in the field they're bullied oh, mercilessly yeah. you know yeah. so, there's not a huge rhyme or reason to it. You'd all, you'd always think the horse that's top dog in the field would be the top dog when it's racing, but it doesn't seem to follow that well. No, it's really strange. Like we sometimes do see a, a big dog being intimidated by a small dog. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And I've got a mare, a lovely one, well, nice filly, and she she'll be galloping away with her, and she'll be upside another horse, and she'll suddenly turn and try and take a chunk out the other horse. <laughs> <laughs> she's come out a few times and she's a really nice natured mare but she just she just is a mare and she says no sometimes and especially if the other horse gets his head in front she's naughty <laughs> that was so, that's not efficient for her racing listen love we haven't got time to take a bite out of him <laughs> not really she's done it a few times especially if you've got a, a loose hand and you haven't got a good hold of her head he's just don't yeah. see it coming she's really funny but she's she wouldn't do it on on the ground, you know. Yeah. Very sweet. Yeah. It's yeah, very yeah. Fun, so they've all they're all characters. They all have different ways about them. Do you know we um we were, I mean it's so lovely to hear that yours are still out. And last time we chatted, you were saying how nice it was to give oh, them more of a natural life. Yeah, it's amazing, and I'll keep doing that for as long as I can. Yeah. Um, obviously today has been pretty hideous, and they came in this morning wet and you know, but it's not cold. And Christ, they got fur, haven't they? Yeah. And, yeah. You know, they, yeah, yeah. I tend to sort of we tend to humanise them a little bit and think, oh, you know, they're wet and they need rugs and, but really yeah. they they've got to, you know, yeah, yeah. Really natural. And it's possible. probably it's probably good for the, you know, we were talking about health and viruses last time, and it's probably Absolutely. good for their immune system to get Absolutely. cold, you know, and and it's good for their digestive system yeah. as well, you know. 
because horses are grazing animals and they're, they're designed to be eating for 18 hours a day yeah so and really to keep them you know obviously at the moment they're they're in work and I'm having to watch because they need the higher energy food and then they're on the grass as well so they they will take a bit longer to to get fitter yeah. um, and we'll keep her on the keep them on the shorter grass um, but it's so good for them health wise do you know, I really, I really hope that you attract trainers who care about the, the, the you know, the health owners. of their uh, yeah. Sorry, owners. Um, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. But, you know, we'll see. The results will speak for themselves, hopefully, yeah. being in a new place and, and with this regime. And, you know, I think it's it's important, especially in this day and age, the way the world's going, that, you know, everything is under scrutiny all the time. Yeah you know and and the way people tr behave and treat their animals and is really really important now oh, um, totally. yeah and it, you know they are for me for me they are sentient beings even though people would probably yeah, yeah. that. but they they do have you know they they, they do have feelings and That's and so needs funny. you yeah. know so yeah i think it's really important to try and sort of give them what they need because they're doing a job for us you no, know exactly they haven't chosen to be racehorses have they no they haven't and they've given the best you know but they love their job but but the know? only ones who succeed have to be the ones that enjoy it yeah that's it. i agree completely and you know more often than not if a horse doesn't want to race it won't race yeah. and it's not cost effective to keep it in training yeah. and it does you know you're not going to make them you can't force them to do it yeah. so more often than not they've found a job outside of racing and those types tend to be lovely riding horses yeah yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah. so they, our horses are all ridden with the view that at their end of their career they could go off and be riding horses you know they're yeah, all, yeah taught to do other things as well yeah i think it's very important for them to have a, a second career yeah um, totally yeah and no horse will ever leave mine and it will never it will always be traceable we'll always know where they go they were always given away to people that under the proviso they're not sold on and they have a home for life yeah yeah oh that's so good to yeah, yeah yeah it's very important and i think racing is becoming a lot more like that now which is great Really yeah, good. they're not they're not machines. No, no, they're not. And you know, it's very important to remember that. Um yeah. and I like I like the fact that now it's it's much more um people are much hotter on that now. Good. Yeah, good. very good. Good. Um so um you so the 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 courses that are operating that are having these behind closed door um races, yeah. is it have I got this right that they're the courses that can provide um hotel accommodation for the staff well uh, i uh, i probably i shouldn't really comment on that because i'm not 100 percent sure no because i think most of the meetings are in places where they don't go overnight at the moment oh, okay okay um, but they have now announced that there are places that can provide that right. um it's very very strict i mean we've all had to do a course um, to say we understand um, the PPE um, and the the guidelines and everything, yeah. and we all have to have a certificate to say that our temperatures get taken. We all have to wear face masks. Um, all our kit has to be disinfected and just kept for us. Um, you know, they're being yeah. very very stringent about it, and but, you know, rightly so. So, is there, I mean, in where, is there any risk of, of of jockeys having contact with each other? I mean, obviously, when they go into the change rooms and they weigh, they no, they but they can't shower on the course. They're all wearing face masks all the time. Um, you know, we're only allowed um, a trainer and two staff with the horse at most. Um, you know, and all have to um, maintain the social distancing. Yeah. And and I think on race courses, it's quite an easy thing to do because there's so much space. There is so much space. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose yeah. the, the only time there's a risk that jockeys might, you know, it's not a contact sport, is it? But no. but, it, but in a race, you might get horses bunched up, and you might. Oh, that's it. That's why the... they're wearing the the face masks. Yeah. yeah. So you do know. they have to wear them during the race? Yes, 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 yes. Blimey. They do. I couldn't think of anything worse, but fair play no. to them. Yep. Yeah, Gosh. they do. Yeah. Because it's hard. Um, it's not easy to breathe wearing no, them. No, not at all. I couldn't imagine anything worse than giving one a drive yeah. and having a face mask on. Yeah. Um, all credit to them, but they're you know they're doing it without complaint and hats off to them all. Yeah. I have mm -hmm. to say, so they've done a fantastic job, and I think it was brilliant to start racing, um, and I, it seems to be working very well. Yeah. 
I, I think that racing was quite keen to be the first sport to restart with yeah. a bit of competition. It's given, yeah, it's given people things to watch at home yeah. I think, as well. I think how many people have been, you know, so bored and yeah. it's something to sort of watch. So it's just given a new audience, I think, as well to racing. I bet um, it has, yeah. Yeah, so in some ways, you know, they've done very well. Yeah, I mean, I think apparently... Um, just with horses in general, there's some. I, I was talking to a chap recently who was looking to buy a horse for his, yeah. and he, he said, I can't, they, there's none available. You know, everybody's gone out and bought a horse in lockdown. What, for a riding horse? Yeah, or for a, a riding horse. Uh, you know, somebody just said that to me just now about the prices for them that have gone yeah. through the roof, which is amazing. Because, yeah. You know, you think in this in this current climate, financially. Yeah, but the other problem is the um, the RSPCA is reporting more abandoned horses. I know that's, yeah. that's dreadful, absolutely dreadful. And I, I, you know, I think the market will bottom out. I think you know people gradually are losing jobs and being made redundant, and it can't continue. No. Um, and it's really quite concerning. Um, I don't know what in a few months' time the situation will be, but I can't imagine it will continue like that. No. And, it, um, you know, it is a commitment, you know. It's yes, a commitment not having a cat or a dog, but a horse. Oh, it's a huge commitment. And, mm. it, and it costs a lot. I mean, yeah. it, costs, it costs me with staff. The cost alone a week for one horse is about £280 a week yeah. cost to keep. Yeah. And that's not making money, yeah. you know. So that's doing everything, you know, with the right amount of staff to horses yeah. and doing it properly. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, livery is um, for a riding horse is less. It, it, yeah, you know, yeah. they don't, but it, it's still, you know, it's an awful lot of money to find every yeah, week. Yeah. Vet fees and, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's a massive you know, commitment. So, and that's where I think the big trainers will continue and the small trainers will be gradually falling by the wayside, which really? is a real shame. Yeah. Really? Oh, um, gosh. It's very sad. So, I mean. And I can't know, see the big trainers doing what you're doing and putting them out. They can't. I don't think they have that luxury I, I, because no. they don't have the ground and to have so many horses, it's incredibly hard for them to, to do that, you know. Um, it's just the way of it, really. And. I, it, I mean, I would appeal, and I my my market that I would like to have as owners, and I have already, are people that want to be involved and want to be, um, you know, involved with their horses and care about their horses' welfare. Mm -hmm. And I can talk to and be, you know, honest mm -hmm. with, and mm -hmm. you know, and not worry about telling them if there's an issue, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't envy the big trainers with with owners that are, are very. They want results. Yeah. You know, they're spending big money, big, big money. Um, yeah. And it's about um, winning rather than yes, the process. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. For me, it's more about the process. Yeah. Um, you know, it's about the journey with the horse more than yeah. the, not that obviously you're, you're training to get winners, but yeah. you want to get the best out of that horse, no matter what level that horse is at. Yeah. You know, you want to get the best that horse can achieve. And, you know, I think that for me is more important. Yeah. Um, but you know, it'd be it's a, it's just you just you just train or you work to the standard and level that you have, you know. Yeah. Uh, and enjoy it and accept accept what I have as horses and and love them and yeah, yeah. you know appreciate them really. Yeah, yeah. So so who have you got? Who 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 do you think you will be your first runner? Um, it's for Alan. I think will be our first runner. Um, either at Utoxeter or Stratford. Um, the end of the first week of July, I hope. That's the plan at the moment. But, you know, it's a plan, but, you know, the horse will tell me where he's at um, and if he's ready. And if he's not ready, we wait and find another race, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, know, you make plans and the best will in the world. Sometimes you just have to be flexible. So, um, I mean, it, you don't have much warning, do you? And I know you have to think on your feet the whole time. Yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah, you do. You do because the ground changes. Yeah. I mean, you have, you know, when you have, we've just got the program, so we can look ahead to sort of the end of July. I think or into August, just about. Um, and so we have some races we can sort of aim at, but then there's also going to be an awful lot of horses that want to run, an awful lot of trainers that, you know, so then mm. we might not get into a race. Mm. Um, so, and there aren't for that particular horse. There's probably only two races in a, a three weeks that are suitable. Mm. Um, so we have to hope a the ground is right, b the horse is ready, and c we get into the race. You know. Mm. So yeah, you have to be flexible, um, especially with the lower grade horses. Really, mm. you know, 
the bigger horses that run at the, at the top end, well, obviously they're trained for the minute for the big races, and mm. you know, but for the lower grade horses, you just have to sometimes you won't have everything in your favour, but mm. Mm. you say you might not have the right ground, but you're yeah. on the right track, the right race, you know, so it, it is what it is, really. Yeah, yeah. And and so, do you have any? I know that you um you sometimes have what's it called shares. You can buy a leg. Yeah. Of the board, <laughs> yeah. Well, we have um one little um racing club called um these girls can for ladies. Um and that little horse wasn't the most successful here last year. He had a few niggles, but actually the ladies loved it and and a lot of them stayed in for another year. Um and that cost two hundred and fifty pounds for the year um and you know they get to come racing obviously it's, it's a ballot if more than the amount of tickets i get want to go mm-hmm. so you just draw out of a hat but we had sort of i don't know maybe six mornings here last year where they came um saw him on the gallops you know had a demonstration by a chiropractor and a physio and and they had bacon sandwiches in the pub afterwards and you know, it really is good. You know, it's good fun and they're lovely people. And I need to do a couple more of those, but it's just administering them and, and having the time to do it when you're doing everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but if I anybody's know, listening, I mean, that's pretty yeah. reasonable, £250 for a year. Yeah, I mean, it is. Yeah. It is. And I, to be fair, listen, it cost me an arm and a leg, really, because I didn't sell enough shares. But <laughs> I, I enjoyed it and I could afford to carry it um i need to do more to market it um but it's just nice having nice people that you yeah. know that are, are, are in it because they love the horses in it because they love sort of meeting other people as well yeah. you know it's a good way to have a bit of a social gathering for people and and um, did you, was, was part of the inspiration because you knew some women who were a bit shy about going to the races on their yeah, own yeah. And, yeah and more often than not the owners i've met have been the wives of the women of the wives of the male owners Mm. Mm. um and there are quite a few sort of horsey women that have their own horses funny enough quite a few of the women involved have their own happy hack horses and Mm. they just live breathe Mm. love their animals and wanted you know to get involved and and just you know not feel intimidated Mm. i suppose um and yeah I, I will. I've got another little horse that I really, really, I haven't done anything about selling any shares of him yet because I really think a lot of him. Um, and I'm trying to decide which way to go, whether I do him just um, 10 shares in the syndicate and sell shares, and that would be a lot more expensive. That's more sort of £250 a month. Or I do him as a racing club again. It's just having the time to market it, mm. and that's what I lack. Mm. So, um, I, you know, I can't do everything. Um so we'll see, we'll see. So I have got a couple of horses. I do have shares of them. It's just a case of sort of finding the right connotation yeah. of them. But if anybody's listening who's intrigued by what you might have to offer, <laughs> are, they can, are they welcome Absolutely. to Absolutely. approach Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, any time, any time. And, you know, I have done the odd morning for well, a group called the Go Racing Green Group for the Mental Health Awareness. Um, they don't have any shares at all, but just I did a morning for them so they could come and see horses in working and then you know have a look round and so I do do the odd yeah. mornings like that for people that aren't involved just because I think it's important that the public actually get an insight into racing yeah. um and I think it's I had some people that came actually that were very anti-jumps racing and by the time they left they were completely converted oh. and they were so happy and so impressed that the the care the horses got oh, it was lovely yeah were, were really they worried lovely. about the the number of casualties yes yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. And I think I don't think they realised just how many horses can injure themselves in the field, actually mm-hmm. far more, or hit by cars on the road or, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the casualties on the course, because all, all the animal rights people ever concentrate on is, is the one offs as opposed mm-hmm. to all the other thousands of horses that, I mean, I've had horses run up until they're 12 and then they've got to be rehomed and they're still going strong in their teens, you know, mm-hmm. 20s. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's longevity. I find with the jump horses, it's a case of longevity with them, where the flat horses, it's, it, although people look at the flat and think it's much less cruel, I think their lifespan is much shorter, um, as in their racing lifespan. Mm. So the, mm. the, the the rate of horses that are discarded from the flat is a lot higher than the jumps. Mm. So I, I, that's, I mean, I should train more flat horses because it's easier, but mm. I much prefer the jumpers. <laughs> 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 a lot more heartache and a lot harder work and you know but I just uh, enjoy them because they're characters okay so is it 
Is the breed, are they bigger, physically bigger? They used to be, but unfortunately now, um, because there's a lot of money for two-mile hurdlers, like the Triumph Hurdle, Champion Hurdle, you know, a lot of horses have come now from the flats with the flat speed, and and you don't tend to get your big old-fashioned mm. chasers anymore like you used to. They're mm. much more flat orientated now. Um, and yeah, people will pay, they would spend an absolute fortune for a gelding with a good flat rating to go jumping, you know, three or uh, six figure sums, you know, that you oh, couldn't yeah. compete. It's insane. Absolutely insane. So, you know, you, I'm trying to find a horse for 600 quid that I can take these on with, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, which we've done and we've beaten them, you know, we, we, we can do it with cheap horses. It's just being clever and finding them. Yeah. So, mm. but yeah, and I enjoy that actually. I'm sure, you know, if somebody spent 150 grand on a horse for me, I don't know how much I'd enjoy that because the pressure would be on. You'd spend yeah. the money and you have to produce the results. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's so, much better to create something out of nothing, yes. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a bit of a coward's way out, actually, because nobody expects it. <laughs> and then when you do produce something, it's like, well, <laughs> so, um, But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love to have some nicer quality horses, but that's not the be all and end all. It's just, how, you know, it's getting the best out of what you've got. Yeah. And as you say, if they if you can give them a good life and they've got a good exactly. personality and you can have a good relationship with them, I do. Yeah, very important. Clearly, I wouldn't keep a horse in training and charge an owner if it couldn't return mm. their investment. Mm. Not return. You're never. Mm. You know, I had a horse that won five for me over a couple of seasons, and he still didn't cover his training fees. Mm. You know, so I mean, it's very hard to win five races. Is really good but he mm. still didn't cover what he cost mm. to buy and train mm. so you know you don't buy a horse and think i'm mm. going to make money it no. just isn't going to happen but on the other hand i won't keep a horse in training that isn't going to give somebody a cheer and and you know at least at least i think it can win yeah you know, what I mean? yeah, yeah. And, you know yeah, yeah. i just i think that's just wrong i wouldn't and if i have a horse that has any sort of injury or i think isn't a, a not genuine is the wrong word doesn't want to be a racehorse then they're told and and it's up to the owner if they want to continue yeah. then i don't want to take their money you know yeah 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 oh well done you well, no, you, well you, have yeah. to live, you have to sleep at night don't you you, you have do to. You, I, mm. you know what i had I, I can't I, you know you have to treat people as you want to be treated and mm. know that if it was my money or my horse would i spend it yeah. and that's the way if i go to the sales to buy for somebody I won't part with that cash unless I would be happy yeah. spending it, it you yeah. know, and every time it's paid off, I've bought an awful lot of winners, whether I've trained them or not, um, for an owner that, you know, he's, he's trusted me with a lot of money to buy horses for him. Um, and it's paid off. Yeah. 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 It's important. Brilliant. Well, listen, best of luck with, um, what, what's the, it called? It's for Ken. It's for, it's for Alan. It's, it's for, for Alan. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, he's, he's, he'll be the first one. Yeah. How people come up with names? I mean, I know. I mean, do, does every name have to be unique? Obviously, they can't repeat yeah. the names. Well, it, horse... can, it can be a horse that's maybe passed on um, mm. and is no longer alive. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, you try. Do you know what you think? Oh, I'd love to name a horse, and and as you're going along, you think, oh, that would make a great name, and you don't write it down. Then you forget, and when you actually come to name, I've got one at the moment actually that I own half of. And um, we've been sort of playing with, with names for her. Um, and actually, it's not as easy as you think no. because, you know, you think, oh, do you name her, sort of put some of the sire and the dam in there? Or do you, you know, it, and you think, oh, no, that doesn't suit her. Or, that, <laughs> you know, and it's, it is quite a responsibility. And then, you, you know, some... <laughs> Some names you think that will never win a race, you know. <laughs> so, well, you've got to think what it's going to sound like when the commentator yeah, is screaming exactly. the name out. <laughs> exactly. It is fun. And it is fun. And it's all part of the process of buying. If somebody buys an unnamed, un unbroken horse, it's a long journey to get them to the track, mm. um, you know. But it, it, they buy the dream, don't they? Mm. You know, it's that dream. So, you know, some people like buying horses that are up and running already with form, but others like to buy them mm. untried, unnamed, and, and mm. you've got that. It could be, you know, what mm. it could be. It's it very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, um, just to remind so people, if they want to find out more about your syndicate offers. Um, yeah, just, just go on that. to um, or Joe Davis Racing. I'm updating my website, but on Facebook, um, Joe Davis Racing or Instagram, Joe Davis Racing, um, and then all my contact details are on Facebook. Okay. 
so yeah, I'd be more than welcome to give me a call anytime okay. and come and visit. Yeah, brilliant. And, and listen, do if you if you remember, do let us know when you've got your first uh, runner book. I will do. Yeah, I will do. No problem. I'll give you a shout. But there's nothing you know. more exciting than seeing a horse that you know yeah. on telly. The first time that I thought, wow, I know, I've ridden that horse. Yeah. Wow, look at it. <laughs> I know. It, yeah, it is exciting, actually. Um, and it's funny, we have an awful lot of followers, really nice people on Facebook. Um, and you forget how interested people are mm -hmm. in just the day-to-day -day stuff, mm. you know. And, and it's nice. They all follow us and they watch them run. And, mm. you know, so it's lovely. And I love sort of, I love being able to sort of give people things to interest them. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, no really, really, definitely. Well done, <laughs> well done. No worries. All right, Penny. All right, take care.